is the two bucket wash method dead? Is it a thing of the past? We're going to talk about that today. So what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So in the past year, I've been doing some secret testing. I've had some discussions with a few professional detailers, a few of my YouTube detailing channel friends, as well as some chemists in the industry. And we kind of came to a conclusion that things have evolved enough in the past years where the two bucket method might not be the method of choice anymore. And I'm going to explain why it might not be fully dead. So follow me as we're going to go through the uh, motions, why uh, we're alternating this method, what my preferred method moving forward will probably be at this point. I'm going to show you the equipment and tools you're going to need to do this new method. And of course, you're going to see it in a demo on my own vehicle as it's due for a cleaning right now. So first of all, the current technical or um, most used wash methods for a vehicle are traditionally the one bucket method and the two bucket method. Now I've covered that extensively in the past in a video the one bucket versus two bucket method. I'll link that in the description if you want to check that out. But in a nutshell, the one bucket method is a method where you only have one bucket, but multiple washing media. So either multiple microfiber wash mitts or multiple microfiber towels, whatever you like to use to clean your vehicle. And the principle is that you're dunking that media inside your, uh, your bucket. You're cleaning a section. You're flipping the towel or mitt to the clean side, do another section, then discard that uh, wash mitt or towel. So it never goes back with the so-called dirt inside the wash bucket. You pick up another microfiber wash mitt or microfiber towel and you continue on, so on and so forth. And the two bucket wash method has two buckets. So one bucket is your soapy wash solution and your second bucket is just some clean rinsing water. So the principle in that one is that you're dunking your wash media, your microfiber wash mitt or microfiber uh, towel inside your soapy solution. You're going to clean a section of the vehicle. You're going to come back and rinse the that mitt or towel inside your rinse bucket. So that's going to remove a bit of that loose dirt and debris. So that way you're not recontaminating your second bucket, which is the wash solution when you're dunking it back in. And you're, of course, those, both of those methods are made to kind of alleviate or help to reduce the chances of marring the paint when you're contact washing your vehicle. Now, fast forward to 2023 and things have evolved quite a bit. So for those who don't believe in snow foams, by the way, yes, five, 10 years ago, we had mainly pH neutral snow foams and they were used mostly for lubrication. They didn't have any real cleaning properties. But today it is very important that we have a pre-wash stage. So before the contact wash with a proper snow foam, because there's some alkaline snow foams out there. So the higher on the pH scale that do have some cleaning properties. And I'm going to talk about which products you need in just a few seconds. Uh, but those I've done extensive st testing. You can see that on other channels as well. They actually do some pre-cleaning for you. And when you do a proper pre-wash with either a foam cannon or a foam gun, regardless if you have a pressure washer with a foam cannon or a garden hose with the foam gun, you're basically spraying that soapy solution, letting it dwell. It's going to help to lift and encapsulate any loose dirt and debris. And then of course, it's going to help to remove a bit of that grit as well that's on the surface. Then you flush that away before the contact wash. So 80 to 85% of that dirt is knocked off before you actually get to a point where you're using your wash media. And case in point, if you want watch any of those channels of the disaster details, right? Those disgusting, filthy vehicles uh, that people bring in for a detail. You should be able to notice that after the pre-wash, so as soon as they foam the vehicle and do that pre-rinsing, the majority of that dirt is off and the car almost looks clean, right? Now, don't get me wrong. We always have to follow a pre-wash with a full contact wash because it's the only way to get 100% clean. There is no such thing as a touchless car wash at the moment if you want 100% clean. So pre-wash followed by a wash. So in this case today, I'm going to show you what I've come through a full year of conclusion because I wanted to go through all four seasons here in Montreal, Canada, including winter months and uh, see if there's any marring uh, done on my own vehicle because I used my own car as the, uh, the test subject. And uh, while well, the conclusions were super good, you can see the smile on my face. So basically, we're using one bucket and we're not even using multiple wash media. We're using one microfiber towel, but you're going to see how we do it. So first, let me show you what tools and equipment you're going to need. Uh, by the way, don't worry 
worry, I'll leave the links to all the tools, equipment, and products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Also, quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. Nobody paid for this video. I am just here to share my thoughts and methods. So first order of business, obviously, you're going to need a wash bucket. Uh, you're also going to need a wash media. So by this, what I like to use is either a microfiber chenille wash mitt, chenille because they have these kind of fingers to trap that dirt inside there, or a more traditional style microfiber wash mitt like this microfiber madness uh, in credit mitt, which I absolutely like. So obviously something gentle for the paintwork. Inside the bucket, this is one of the crucial parts uh, that is non-optional because they are important. And we're talking about a grit guard. So uh, it's basically a grill that sits at the bottom of your wash bucket. And this is to keep that dirt uh, that's instead of floating inside your bucket, it's going to stay underneath that grill. It helps basically prevent the water from splashing back up. And there are different types. So this is the original OG grid guard from the grid guard company. Uh, and this one here, the dirt lock, this is from the detail guards. So this is a bit different in the design, a bit higher performance, so more expensive, but you are getting more for your money. Has these locking tabs when you're putting it uh, deep inside your bucket. And inside here, if you're looking, it has these Venturi funnels that's going to filter your water once again, but the principles are the same. It keeps the dirt at the bottom of your bucket, so it's not going to be suspended in your wash solution. So you're always dunking your media in the top part where the clean wash solution is. Uh, next, you're going to need something for the pre-wash stage. So the pre-wash, once again, is very important because we are using some sort of a surfactant-based uh, detergent, in this case, a snow foam, inside either a foam gun. So if you have just a garden hose, don't don't worry, you can use this. This is a foam gun. So you put your solution in here. This attaches directly to your garden hose and you have this trigger. So obviously you're not going to generate as much foam as a pressure washer and foam cannon setup for obvious reasons. You don't have the same water output and pressure, uh, but still at least you're going to be able to get that foam. And if you do have a pressure washer, obviously I highly recommend uh, a foam cannon. In this case, this is the new uh, MJJC uh, foam cannon version 3.0, the S series. So we already pre-mixed in here one of the snow foams I'll be talking about, uh, but you do your dilution. It connects to your pressure washer, thanks to the quarter inch uh, quick connect, and that's it. You're blanketing uh, the surface of your vehicle with a layer of that snow foam. You're gonna let it dwell, never work in direct sunlight, always on a cool surface and in the shade, or if you're lucky like me, and you can work in a garage perfect in a more controlled environment uh, but never let these things dry on the surface obviously not only for the better uh, washing experience but also for the fact that the product is going to perform better because you're going to let it dwell dwell time is important follow the instructions by the way of the product uh, that you are using because some of them have different dilution ratios uh, some of them also have different dwell times on the surface so the purpose is you're going to start to soften up a bit of that loose dirt and debris encapsulate it inside the surfactants the detergents all that uh, uh, technology and chemistry that's inside uh, the uh, pre-wash, lift it on the surface, and then you're going to rinse that off the surface. So you're going to get 80 to 85% clean already with just that pre-stage. Then we're going to refoam the vehicle again, as you're going to see in the demo, to add lubrication now for the contact wash. So we're going to have a bucket with your favorite soap, your favorite car shampoo inside there, diluted properly. Uh, but with the added snow foam on the top uh, a second time for that snow foam because we're refoaming, well, you're going to have added lubrication. So your wash media is going to glide on the surface. We want a lubrication, which is very important. That's what minimizes the chances of marring the paint, having any micro scratches or micro swirls. Anytime you touch the paint, right, it's the wash phase and the hand drying stage. If you're using a microfiber drying towel at the end, that's where the majority of the love marks or the marring occurs. So how do you alleviate that? Well, with methods like these. So if we have a traditional wash, so for your weekly washes, you can use a pH neutral snow foam, just like this one. This is uh, Kochemi, the gentle snow foam, pH seven and a half, pH neutral, let's consider that neutral, that's fine. And you have another neutral shampoo, but made more for ceramic coatings for your wash process in the bucket. This is CarPro Reset. So this is more than enough for your traditional weekly washes. When you want to bump it up a notch and do an actual uh, pre-wash stage that has a bit of cleaning or a bit more bite, 
So there's two categories of snow foams. So there's the light alkaline and there's the heavier alkaline. So let's start with the light ones. So things like DIY detail, this one here, Incredible Suds, is can be used in the foam cannon and in the wash bucket. This is their pH eight and a half shampoo. It's still wax safe, sealant safe, and coating safe, obviously, but it has a bit more bite when you're doing when you're using it as a snow foam in your foam cannon. Another one that's very good is W4 from G Technic out of the UK. This is a citrus foam, so still pH neutral, but has a bit more of that bite. So that citrus technology in there to start uh, uh, removing a bit of that grime and a bit of that traffic film. And last but not least, which is the one we're using in today's demo, pH 9.5 for this one. Uh, this is the Active Foam by Koshemi. So basically think if they had GSF and you added a bit of GS, Green Star, that's their all-purpose cleaner mixed inside there, you would kind of get this one here. So that's the, uh, the baby that came out. This is the Active Foam. So again, pH 9.5, a bit more bite. So this you could use for the pre-wash. And now you're getting a bit of that cleaning, not heavy-duty cleaning, like some of these that we'll talk about, but for your regular weekly washes, these are more than fine and you can use them no problem. They will not weaken or harm your your ceramic coating uh, and if you have some normal protection as a wax or a sealant as long as it's still in its lifespan uh, or life cycle it should be pretty fine so next we move every probably once every month or every other month or especially at the start of a new season so after winter so when springtime comes in you want a deeper clean right you're going to move to the higher alkaline ph so something like this this i wouldn't these by the way i would not recommend on regular waxes or sealants because that could start breaking them down and stripping them and i wouldn't recommend them weekly even on a coated car because eventually you can start weakening the properties of your coating although uh coatings that are well within their um their considered uh lifespan pan should be fine they can resist this just don't use this too often right so the first one ph12 this is super foam by koshemi so very powerful against dirt grime traffic film the next one you guys follow my channel you know bill tamber of some of the best snow foams for cleaning properties so auto foam ph13 they also have their bill tamber touchless this one here is sugar based and pH 12. So I like this one, especially in the winter months for that road salt. This works ex especially uh, well. So another high alkaline. And this one here, uh, close to pH 11, is CarPro Lift, designed for coated vehicles. So this, again, is a uh, intense uh, pre-wash. So these four, I would use every once in a while when you want that deeper clean that higher cleaning potential to remove traffic film road grime uh, before the contact wash so this kind of going to shock that surface right and that's uh, another way you can also help to restore a bit of the properties of the coatings when they're starting to be clogged because a lot of the mineral deposits they dig into the coating and you want to remove those and that's going to restore the hydrophobic properties assuming that the coating was properly applied and uh, it's still healthy enough or well within its durability claim right so we have our bucket we have have the grit guard we have our wash media we have the foam cannon or foam gun and now we know which pre-wash snow foam we are using so uh, these ones here with a bit more bite uh, again the diy detail incredible suds the citrus foam w4 from g technic uh, or the active foam from koshemi you can use weekly so that's have a bit more bite compared to a traditional snow foam that's just ph neutral that only lubricates the surface but not real cleaning and then you have the uh, super high alkaline ph 11 12 13 snow foams once in a while for that deeper cleaning uh, and they do clean the surface i have a video on that by the way ph 7 versus ph uh, 12 or 13 if you want to see what kind of a cleaning difference you get so these actually do some work that's how much progress has been made with the technology so the purpose is blanket the vehicle let that dwell rinse it off refoam the vehicle then you have that lubrication and then do the contact wash rinse dry the vehicle and that's pretty much it you can use of course your quick detailer if you want at the end if you're mechanically drying with your microfiber drying towel you should be using a quick detail spray or some sort of lubrication on the surface for the towel to act as a buffer between the paint and the towel or if you're using a uh, blow dryer or a car dryer like i like to use or a leaf blower uh, because you have a coated car the water just flies off quickly you're more efficient uh, and then you can just grab a microfiber towel and a quick detailer to quickly remove any residual water boost the gloss the 
slickness and that's it, you're done. So in today's demo, let's jump. I'm gonna show you how I do this now. I started by cleaning the wheels and tires because that doesn't change. I always start with that. It's the dirtiest parts of the vehicle. You can clean your wheels and tires at the end if you prefer. It's just my preferred method of cleaning the wheels and tires first. As you normally would, this is not a uh, wheel and tire cleaning tutorial. This is a, uh, a body wash. So you can see how we clean the paintwork. So now that the wheels and tires are clean, I'm gonna show you how I would start with the uh, pre-wash stage. So let's check it out. All right, guys, so for the demo, I have the pressure washer. This is my Krenzel 1122 TST, for those who are curious. I set it for roughly 1,000 PSI for washing vehicles, uh, thanks to a 4.5 nozzle orifice. I use a 40 degree tip when I'm rinsing the vehicle. Uh, in this case, also I have the MJJC Foam Cannon S version 3.0. Inside there is the Koshemi Active Foam diluted one to 10, one parts of product to 10 parts of water. So I'm gonna clip it on, we're gonna foam the vehicle, we're gonna let that dwell, we're gonna rinse, we're gonna refoam and then do the mechanical uh, contact wash. All right, guys, so we blanketed the entire vehicle surface with the uh, Koshemi Active Foam. That specific snow foam requires a five minute of reaction time or dwell time on the surface. So we're gonna let that do its thing. Again, with all the principle of this is to help uh, emulsify, lift, encapsulate, soften up that dirt and grime so we can rinse it off. And then we're gonna refoam before we do the contact wash. All right, guys, so it's been roughly five minutes. We're gonna switch to have the lance on there. We're gonna rinse the vehicle at this point. All right, guys, so a few thoughts before I refoam the vehicle with the snow foam. Uh, another reason we're foaming the vehicle before we rinse it, because if you notice, the car was dry uh, before the initial foaming. Uh, it doesn't really make that much of a difference if the car is pre-rinsed or dry. Yes, you're diluting the snow foam if you pre-rinse it a little more, but it's not by a huge factor. I also have a video of that pre-rinsing versus not pre-rinsing. Uh, however, in this modified wash method, why we're applying it on the dry paint before we rinse is to have some lubrication on the surface once again and to encapsulate kind of that dirt and grime before you spray your 1,000 to 2,000 PSI pressure washer uh, onto the surface, right? So imagine if there's no lubrication on there, uh, after talking with Ivan LaCroix, my friend, uh, owner of uh, DIY uh, Detail Products, uh, he's been in the industry for over four decades, uh, and he kind of made me understand, right? When you're uh, pre-rinsing the vehicle with either no rinseless wash to encapsulate on there or no snow foam with no lubrication on there, you're driving that dirt and grit at a thousand to two thousand psi onto the paintwork so that can potentially cause scratching or marring in theory uh, so at least when you're blanketing the vehicle with a layer of snow foam you're having kind of that buffer or lubrication on the surface before you rinse a car so again always in an effort to minimize the chances of swirls and scratches so there are many benefits to foaming the vehicle as you guys can see so anybody who thought foaming was just for fun might maybe 10 years ago but not anymore there's reasons why those higher performance snow foams have appeared on the market in the past a few years now and then they're very essential at least for pan the organizer you're usually always going to see it as part of my pre-wash stage uh, now if you're not using a snow foam uh, but you still want to do uh, this kind of method well at least use a pre-rinse or pre-treat with a rinseless wash still diluted 256 to 1 the traditional dilution ratio uh, if you're using any one of the good ones right uh, pns absolute uh, diy rinseless wash um, uh, ONR, so Optimum No Rinse version 5, that's their updated formula, a lot better than the previous formulation, by the way, uh, McKee's N914, there are so many good rinseless washes out there, uh, but diluted 256 to 1 uh, in a pump sprayer, you're going to blanket the vehicle with that, let it encapsulate, let it dwell on there, uh, and then you can rinse, at least you're going to have that lubrication on the surface, right? Uh, but in this case, I like to do this, 
if you have some bug guts uh, or things of that nature, you're going to want to spray the uh, bug remover on the surface before you foam. So spray that, let it dwell a bit. Spray your snow foam on top so the bug remover underneath will still continue working without uh, having the time to dry on the surface, which is always a good thing. So let's refoam the vehicle now and we're going to do the uh, wash method. So we're still using the grit guard in the bucket. We're only using one bucket now. We have one microfiber wash mitt and we're still going to work from top to bottom. So the top parts are the less dirty parts of the car and I keep the lowest parts of the vehicle for the end because that's where the majority of the dirt is. So you don't want to cross contaminate and potentially uh, scratch or mar the top part of the paint. So let's foam the vehicle and do the contact wash. So just so you guys can see, here's the bucket. So I have my soapy solution in there. I have CarPro Reset. So just over one ounce and a half to roughly four gallons of water in there. And then working from top to bottom. You guys know at this point, what I like to do is use the straight line motion. You're not applying any pressure on the surface. So let your mitt do the work, be very gentle. And I usually go in the way that the wind blows on the surface. So on this and on the panels from left to right, as you're going to see. So I separate the vehicle in three parts. So the top part, then the midsection and the lower portion for the end. Every now and then flip your towel to a clean section, uh, flip your mid, I mean, to that other side, which we know is clean. And once this is on camera, so I'm talking at the same time, but if you're very efficient, this wash essentially for the paintwork you can do in 15 minutes. It is super quick. So then you're dunking, rub, of course your mitt on the surface and the bottom. That's the entire purpose get that lubrication going. So again, it doesn't matter if you guys use microfiber towels or a microfiber wash mitt. Basically, use whatever wash media you feel comfortable with. But you see here, you're not hearing any force being applied on the surface. I'm letting the media do its thing. The vehicle's already pretty clean, just thanks to the pre-wash alone, so that's the purpose. So see here now, I flip the mitt, clean side. Ideally, if you want to increase your efficiency, you get a bucket on rollers like I have here. So I like to squeeze that dirt off and the dirty water, and dunk it in the bucket in the bottom. There you go. So I'm going to clean the half that you see on this side of the camera before I move to the other side just to speed things up there for the footage. Again, I flip the wash mitt. And as you can tell, I'm keeping still those lower parts. So there's a lot of tricks, tips and techniques that we're still applying here when we're doing this. And we're going to talk towards the end is the two bucket wash method dead. That's going to be in the conclusions. Stay tuned for that, obviously. All right. So now it's the time to do the lower portions. And again, so in my testing, you guys know how crazy I like to go. And I use my own vehicle as the guinea pig. That's how sure I was of everything that I've learned over the years. But I used inspection lights on the paintwork to make sure I'm not getting any scratches or swirls. And again, my buddy Ivan LaCroix was here recently where we were filming a few videos. Which you guys are going to see on the channel if they're not up already. And he also saw just how my paint was flawless. 
after two years and a half of ownership at this point. So now I'm gonna do the rest of the vehicle and come back to rinse it. All right guys, so contact wash is done. Now it's time for the final rinse. So as you can tell, the hydrophobics are absolutely intact. Two years and a half into this, I remind you that my car is coated with professional grade uh, roar coatings. So it's a ceramic, graphene, and polysilazane uh, dual layer system. But uh, yeah, still beating and sheeting very quickly. Check this out. There we go. Water is quick to sheet. The beads are super tight, super round. So the fact that we're increasing the alkalinity a bit on the pH scale with those snow foams, absolutely no worries on coated vehicles. And so you can see the hydrophobics on a vertical panel. And there we go, super quick sheeting again. Tight, round water beads, just like we like. There's minimal water left. It's gonna be very easy to dry. Okay guys, so what did we learn? Basically uh, a revolution, I think, or an evolution perhaps in the car wash method. So one bucket, one wash media, so one microfiber wash mitt in my case, uh, a grit guard at the bottom of the bucket to separate the dirt at the bottom from the rest of your clean wash solution on top. And then pre-wash is very important regardless if you're using a foam gun with your garden hose or a pressure washer and a foam cannon. You're blanketing the vehicle with that layer of snow foam. You can use snow foams obviously that have a bit more bite uh, for that pre-wash stage to clean a bit more of that dirt grime. And we're knocking off basically all that grit, that surface dirt, the gritty material. And then we're rinsing that off after the dwell time. And so you're getting less chances of scratching and marring because 80 to 85% of the surface at this point is clean. We're we're refoaming the vehicle at this stage and then we're going to do the contact wash with your traditional uh, car shampoo and then we're going to have tons of lubrication on the surface because we refoamed the vehicle at that point and the wash media is going to glide on the surface we rinse all of that off and we get to a point now where it's ready to dry uh, either you're going to use a quick detail spray and a microfiber drying towel as usual or in my case i'm going to use a uh, cordless leaf blower because it's very fast and efficient and at the end i'm going to do a once over quickly with a microfiber towel and a uh, quick uh, detailer to boost gloss and slickness and pick up any residual water and that's it you're done so it is very efficient there is no more marring nothing to be worried about i don't have tons of wash media to manage like the traditional one bucket method and i don't have to worry about managing two buckets and having that rinse solution and all that good stuff i know a lot of guys are probably smiling out there because they say finally uh pan's talking about it and uh, yeah so after this year of testing it's very conclusive as far as i'm concerned pre-washes have evolved to a point now where i think if someone says that snow foams are ridiculous and they're useless i don't think they have tried the proper snow foams and foaming techniques. Uh, go check out my buddy John Delier from the Forensic Detailing channel as well. He's covered this extensively, uh, this process. Also the same with uh, Ivan LaCroix and Nick McGurk over at DIY Detail. A bunch of other detailers and detailing channels out there as well are big proponents of this method. Now you're probably gonna see this more and more. Does this mean that the two bucket wash method is dead? Absolutely not. I mean, if you still wanna use it, so use this method, right? Pre-wash, rinse, foam again, and then use the two bucket method. That's even better. So you're again minimum any perhaps chances of potential marring but it's not necessary at this point uh, so if you're satisfied with that one bucket wash method it works well uh, let me know your thoughts by the way uh, have you been using this method or what's your alternative method there are many ways guys by the way to wash a vehicle there's not just one correct way out there i just share the way i do things i share my findings and my research as well i like to thoroughly test as you guys know me at this point i have a background in molecular biology and biochemistry so i can have discussions with these chemists and kind of figure out what the chemistry is behind uh, their products how they work and I kind of think after that how can I apply that uh, to my regular wash routine because I like to wash my car twice weekly so it's been uh, through the ringer this past year and uh, I came to this conclusion that this one bucket wash method works just fine as long as you use common sense of course again if your vehicle is covered in a thick layer of mud you'd pre-rinse that off and then do the snow foam the rinse the foam again and the contact wash uh, but if it's anywhere light dirt to moderate amounts of dirt and you do this method absolutely no problem foam on dry let that dwell rinse foam again 
contact wash, rinse, and then do your drying process and you're good to go. And uh, yeah, you're just going to love the efficiency of it. And again, share your thoughts, your comments. Again, I'm going to leave the links to all the stuff, the products, the tools, the equipment in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. Share this video with people that you might know uh, if you're convinced also about the one bucket method and it's time for them to finally switch or at least try something else, right? Don't stay in your old ways and don't evolve. Things have changed so much. I've been detailing for 26 years at this point and things have evolved quite a bit in the past decades. So if you're stuck in the dinosaur days of decades ago, I mean, you're, you're missing out on a lot of the fun. The whole point is to enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy the process. For me, it's soothing. It's relaxing and uh, evolve. Yeah, change your ways, change your methods. So share this video with anyone that you think might benefit from listening to it. Again, share your thoughts in the comment section. And in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see all of you on the next one.